Yo, 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 welcome to the first Carp Angle Extra. Okay, so what is Carp Angle Extra? Basically, it's gonna be some shorter instructional videos that are gonna go into a bit more depth on various topics, um, things that apply to my fishing, and hopefully things that are gonna help you improve your fishing too. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at Google Earth. Now, Google Earth is a ridiculously helpful tool for us carp anglers. Um, I use it all the time. And what I find is that, you know, it's a really good way of getting a venue into your head before you've even stepped foot on it. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, obviously there's loads you can learn from an overhead shot, even if you can't see features. Um, first of all, obviously you've got wind directions. You can see when, where the sun comes up. Obviously the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west and travels around the south. So you know that these south facing islands um, are going to be getting a lot of sun when the sun's out and for example if you've got sort of strong northerly winds you know they're going to be pushing this way which is going to make those areas um, of the island sort of in the lee of the wind which is obviously going to make them warmer more comfortable places for the fish to be so good kind of ports of call if you like so this is the picture that you get up when you put the address in um, which is, I think it's the most recent one, which is a bit of a weird effect, and there's not a lot that you can see um, with regards to features. So, what a lot of people don't know about Google Earth is that you can actually change the view to any photo that's ever been taken. Um, so to get that up, you have to click on the clock, which is on the top of the screen, and that brings up a timeline. Then what you can do is flick back through every picture, as you can see, these ones, there's not a huge amount to see. Uh, this year, was that, 2017? There are some lighter areas and some darker areas. Obviously, the lighter areas look like they're the, the cleaner areas to me. Um, but let's just keep going back and see what else we can find. Okay, so 2006. Now you can see there's a lot of weed in there in 2006. And you can see the areas where there's less weed and likely to be quite clear, I imagine, because they're lighter. It's not always the case. Sometimes it's the opposite. You know, the darker areas can be the weed or the darker areas can be the areas where there's not weed. So, yeah, it's just a case of kind of sussing it out, really. Um, so let's, let's keep going back because obviously Kevin Nash created this lake and there's no way Kevin would have just dug a bowl, a flat bowl, you know, he had the opportunity to create the lake of his dream. So I'm sure there's quite a few features in there um, to be found. So this picture, 2005, obviously again, big lighter areas. Um, I imagine at this time the fish were doing a lot of their feeding on the bottom in these sort of zones and probably spending quite a lot of time around this area, maybe patrolling that island. And in this end of the lake, as you can see, chock-a-block with weed. Doesn't look like there's many spots up there whatsoever. Um, obviously, it doesn't mean the fish don't feed up there because the fish obviously feed in the weed. That's is where a lot of the food is. Um, but obviously, to, to present rigs on particular spots, then you need clear areas. Um, and you can see where they are within that one. So that's good to know. And we'll go back a bit more. Oh right, okay, so 2000. This is probably, the lake's probably only been there a few years at this point. Um, and as you can see, the water's fairly clear, but it gives the topography of the lake bed away really well. So you've got what looks to be like a bar here, um, and then another one to the left above that island. And also, if you look closely around these islands, there's like a dark line. Um, around either of them. I have to excuse if you can hear that noise. I've got builders next door. Um, so yeah, the, what's happened here is obviously the digger's been on this island, putting his arm out and dragging back. And by doing so, he's created like a trough all the way around the island. Um, so obviously it goes down and then up again. You can see the lighter areas either side of it. And then in between the island, there's a much darker area and I imagine they've dug that bit out deeper as well, and it's probably done, been done in a similar way that they've dug it whilst being on the island and scraping back towards the island itself. So, um, 
yeah, obviously that's, that's given a lot away that has. And then what you can also do is you can measure the distance of these features. So if you click on the ruler in the top of the screen, it brings up that, you can change it to yards, feet, meters, whatever you want. And then if I was to click on the bank and click out to that bar, it's about 25 yards off the bank. So if you were to turn up, then, you know, if you wanted to find that spot, and obviously you've got a really good rough idea of how far out it is. And then indeed you can also click either side of it. So you can see that that's about four yards wide. So it's about a rod length wide, that bar. And you can see it's quite long as well. It's what, probably 35 yards long. Um, so yeah, really good feature. There's obviously gonna be sort of um, a trough either side of that where, where food's gonna build up. And then you've got the, the shallow area as well. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely a good zone. And then obviously you've got a similar kind of bar on the other end up here, which is yeah, similar, about 30 yards long and yeah, about four yards wide. So yeah, really, really valuable information that um, there's just so much you can learn. And like I say, going back in time, that's, that's the biggest edge of Google Earth for me. Um, there's obviously times when, say, the photo was taken in the winter, and obviously the fish aren't feeding as much, the water can be clearer, or perhaps the lake, you know, you go back into a, to a time when there wasn't any fish in the lake, or not as many fish, and so obviously the water is clearer then, and you can tend to see a bit more. So that's a good... Good uh, bit of reconnaissance work, should I say, for, uh, for the church lake in a couple of days. Buzzing for that. Uh, another, give you another little example of how I've used it lately. I've done a couple of sessions on Twinersh over the winter. And obviously I've, I've never been there before and I hadn't seen it in the summer. Um, what I was able to see with this when I went on to the most recent picture, which is not this one. Let's just change it up to 2021. So obviously this is the summer before the winter. So I'm able to see where the main weed beds were in the summer. Um, and obviously the thickest weed beds tend to be where the fish gravitate to in the colder months. Not all the time necessarily, but it offers them cover, um, obviously a bit of warmth, but also that tends to be where the natural food is left in the decaying weed. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to know where those main weed beds were. The other thing I was looking at when I first looked at this picture was, well, between these islands, it looks like a real key area. And then I was able to go back to, I think it's 1999, when those islands were quite fresh. And as you see, they hadn't really um, been there for very long. And if you look very closely, there's a lighter area between the two, and then a lighter area between the bank and this one. So obviously that was a roadway, which was used to create the islands, and then afterwards it probably just scraped the top off, um, leaving those shallower areas. And obviously this being out there between the two islands, um, away from everything, there's big trees on the islands now, so it offers a huge amount of cover and a very likely looking area. So yeah, I think that gives you a pretty good idea of how to use Google Earth and obviously why it can be such an edge for you in your fishing. If you've got any questions, feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I'll make sure I answer them. Failing that, if you haven't seen it already, episode 19 of Carp Angle is out. It came out last week and it's absolutely stuffed full of carp and information, inspiration and entertainment. Um, so yeah, check it out now. Press the old subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos from myself. And hopefully, I'll see you soon. I've got a buzz on. There's like something special going to happen. Oi, oi. It's going off. To a result. Absolutely mental. Biggest fish in the lake. Absolutely mega, mega mirror. Awesome old car. Can't believe that. Yeah, he absolutely rinsed it that session. Cheers, universe. <laughs> Done well there. Yeah?